So when we talk about the digestive tract of a ruminant, it's different than the digestive tract of a horse or a pig or a chicken. So they have four stomachs instead of one, um, and they rely heavily on mastication, so on chewing their feed because they only have teeth on the bottom. So as the animal consumes their feed, they're chewing it, creating a bolus-like structure, so like a little ball of feed in their mouth, rolling it around. They swallow it, and down their esophagus, the first stomach that they come to is the reticulum. And the reticulum's job is basically to help keep forming that bolus and help send that bolus back up into their mouth. So they'll do this several times, chew it some more, swallow it, and it's called rumination. There's a lot of value in rumination, especially for feedlot animals. So as they're chewing, they're secreting saliva. And that saliva acts as a buffer um, for the rumen. So once the bolus has um, been broke down enough, if he's been broke down enough, it'll enter into the largest of the four stomachs, the rumen, and the rumen is a big fermentation vat. And so there's a lot of bacteria, microorganisms in there, bacteria, protozoa, fungus, yeast, viruses, phages, a lot, a lot of activity goes on in there. Uh, the bacteria are pretty specialized in what they consume. And so in a feedlot ration, you have your grains, which are heavily heavy in starch. You have your roughages that are your fiber sources. And then you have your supplement that has your vitamins and minerals. And so there's certain bacteria that will utilize the grain. Um, and those are called amulytic bacteria. And they're gonna start breaking down that starch into glucose and things like that for further digestion by other bacteria. Um, and then you have your fibrolytic bacteria that digest the fiber sources that come from your roughage and um, other other uh, fiber sources within the diet. So those bacteria then as they digest that their byproduct is called uh, VFA, volatile fatty acid. Uh, the energy source for the animal is the volatile fatty acids or the VFAs that these bacteria are producing. Um, and as these bacteria are fermenting this feed, they also are reproducing and creating more bacteria, more protozoa um, that can be used later down on the digestive tract for the animal as a protein source and energy source it's called microbial cell protein. So from the rumen, the feed that is uh, left within the rumen will be uh, transferred into the omasum, which has leaf-like structures and its main job is to help dehydrate some of that rumen fluid that's come through and so just mainly feed particles are being sent on. So then the fourth stomach is the abomasum, it's called the true stomach. This stomach acts very similar to like yours and mine where it has secretes enzymes, so like hydrochloric acid to help break down proteins and things of that nature. And then goes into the small intestine where they have pancreatic enzymes just like you and I as well. And so digestion from there is pretty similar. And then lower down in the small intestine, you get absorption of all these nutrients that have been broke down from the small intestine on. Uh, and then in the large intestine, um, there is some fermentation that goes on. Um, in a feedlot steer, not, it is not as prevalent because they're consuming a lot of feed over the day. And so feed runs through there pretty quickly. It's called passage rate and it's fairly quickly in a feedlot animal. But an animal out on grass would have a slower passage rate and could have an opportunity for some hindgut fermentation.